I can't wait for you to experience the same thing that I'm experiencing, which is that you find work that is meaningful and enjoyable, and then you get to work really, really hard every single day because it gives you so much fulfillment, especially as a man, when you're working on your craft, your goals, and your purpose. So when I was in high school, I wanted to be able to study. And I think you will relate to that. Most young guys did. Like I wanted to be able to get good grades. My parents put so much pressure onto me. My teachers made it like an expectation. The other kids in my class were getting good grades. My brother and my sister were getting good grades. So I wanted to as well. The problem was my brain just couldn't focus. The teacher would be at the front of the class writing some shit down on the whiteboard. And my brain would just go deviate and fly away to like the video game that I was playing, the girl that I had a crush on, what I was going to do when I got home. It was so hard to stay focused. And now I sit here when I do my work, I have no thoughts in my brain. It's just complete flow states. Not only does that mean that the work I produce is so much better, but it actually means that I enjoy work more. So I'm hoping that with the advice that I give out in this video, you'll be able to experience this as well. And there's a few things I've wrote down that will help you to improve your ability to focus. Some of these things are very fast as well. So the first and biggest, most important thing that I've found is diet. It's what you're eating. It's not like this calories in, calories out. All calories are the same bullshit that fitness influencers try to tell you. We're not even talking about fitness here. We're talking about your brain and your ability to focus. The foods you eat, like what you eat will have a massive impact on your brain and your ability to focus and get good work done. Like I feel the difference so much right now. In a second, I'll tell you what my exact like meal is like, like literally exactly what I eat. But there's been times for most of my life where I ate like a normal person. I had cereal with protein milk. I would have some kind of protein bar, chicken nuggets or some shit. You know, you like you order from some restaurant on Deliveroo or Uber Eats and you get like the chicken tenders or some shit like that or a chicken sandwich or bakery stuff, pastries. I still get them every now and then to be honest. But, like my diet isn't 100, 100% perfect. You know, I'll still kind of cheat on it like every few weeks or something. But I used to eat just basically like a normal person for the last few years when I've been on like bodybuilding. Before that, even before I knew the concept of protein, and I think you'll probably relate to this, my diet was so garbage. And unfortunately, this was basically like my mother's responsibility. She used to just feed me like whatever I asked as a child. And so I used to just eat like chicken nuggets and ketchup, you know, like the frozen pizzas that you put in the oven and you have them and they've got fucking red 40 and actually on the Muslim shit, like complete dirty, disgusting food that a lot of like poor people don't realize just how bad it fucks up your health and your ability to make more money because of how stupid it makes your brain. This is a side point, but this is really the huge struggle of poor people that they can only usually afford the kind of food that keeps them poor. The benefit of being rich is that you optimize everything in your life, including your diet, the foods you eat, so that it's higher quality, it's cleaner food, it's way better for you. And then all of that leads to better health, which then means that you're more likely to go and make more money because your body and your brain is optimized. So I was eating all like this, pretty much whatever you're eating right now, most likely was quite similar to what I used to eat when my brain didn't work. Now my diet's completely and utterly different. The biggest change that I made was that I went on to a low slash no carb diet. That was the biggest change because I cleaned up my diet, right? So I stayed on like a normal macro split of carbs, protein, and fat in like 2020, 2021. I, but I cleaned it up. Instead of eating complete rubbish food, I started to have like cleaner foods, like for example, potatoes. I still had like bread and stuff, but you know, I, I had a bit more of like the sort of natural whole foods that everyone on YouTube talks about. And it was nice. Like my health improved, got leaner. I felt more energetic. It was, you know, a big step up, right? So I was eating the diet that everyone talks about like you know the loads of vegetables a little bit of meat here and there and and whole foods and potatoes and oats and all this shit right i'm telling you it was only after that when i started to cut out carbs that's where my brain actually really improved so i had the normal healthy whole foods diet that is supposed to be optimum for humans but i still had this constant brain fog that i didn't even know was there up until i cut carbs out and that's when i've actually had like a still mind that's when i actually started to produce like some really fucking good work that's when i've had like the, the way more enjoyment in my work and i've lost even more of the sort of puffiness that like just is there mentally and physically in your face and your brain because you might 
might not even realize just how much brain fog you have right now. Because I didn't, for all of my life, I didn't realize that I had like all this brain fog. It was only once I cleared it through a low carb diet, that's when it's improved. So my current diet right now is crazy because I don't eat basically any fucking vegetables. This is probably the healthiest and most optimum that I've been in my life before. This is the strongest that I've been in the gym. This is like one of the greatest that I felt maybe like a few months ago, there was also a time where I felt pretty nice as well. This is exactly what I eat. I eat a lot of meat, a lot of eggs, a lot of cheese, a lot of nuts. So I'm basically on kind of like a keto carnivore. And then the only kind of carb that I have is fruit. And I have that before a workout. And even fruit, when I have just some fruit, which is supposed to be like this wholesome thing that you can have, I actually feel the difference and it actually still gives me a bit of brain fog. But that's why I have it before the gym so that for the next few hours when I'm in gym mode, I don't really need to have like an ultra sharp brain for that. And by the time that I finish the gym, it kind of goes back down to normal. Right now, the biggest thing that you could do to improve your brain's focus and really like become more of a capable intellectual like knowledge worker entrepreneur students just give like the low carb diet a try i'm not saying go full carnivore where you only eat meat and i'm not even saying go keto where you basically are still on like zero carbs imagine your normal meals that you're having right now but think about the carbs that you have so there's rice there's pasta there's bread there's like whatever snack bullshit donuts or something cut all of that out and just replace it with fruits. Immediately, your brain will feel better. It's still delicious because you're having a fuck ton of fruit, which is basically just tastes like sweets, like like candy anyway. And then start to reduce the fruit so you're not having like a crazy amount of it. You're having maybe 300 calories of fruit a day. And just see what happens to your brain. You might be quite pleasantly surprised of how like powerful it feels. You know, for the last few years, I did intermittent fasting. I would wake up in the morning and I would fast and I would work whilst fasting. And how I would work and the work I'd produce whilst fasting was always so good. Like my brain was so sharp. So I used to think fasting is like the key to um, having an amazing brain, but it's not. It's really not. I realize now it was not fasting specifically. It was just that I hadn't ate carbs yet. Because now I wake up and I have protein, I have meat, I have eggs, I have cheese, I have like basically keto carnivore diets. And I still feel like I'm fasting. I still feel like my brain's just absolutely fine. It's only when I touch any kind of carb, that's when my brain starts to go downhill. Now, you might have completely different genetics to me, but don't fucking bullshit yourself. At least go and try it. Just go and try this for like two days and see how different you feel. Because there's usually, every time I mention this diet, there's always like one fucking kid who will disagree with it. And I always ask him like, have you done one day of the sort of keto carnivore diet before? And they say no, and I'm like, so why would you complain and disagree with my advice? Who gives a fuck? Like, what, whatever your belief is. Try it for one or two days, starting from literally tomorrow, and just see how you feel. Because if you get a massive boost to your brain, you might want to start considering doing this. I calculated once that me being on the, the carnivore diet is worth over a million dollars a year because of just how much more productive that it made me. For you, obviously, the rate might be way lower if you don't already have like a successful business that's giving you leverage and momentum. But if you value your time at like 10, 25 bucks an hour, and you get literally like two extra hours of productivity per day. You're talking tens of thousands of dollars of productive time that you would be able to capture if you go onto this diet. The second reason why your brain can't focus and it gives you an opportunity to improve is really interesting. It's purpose. It's actually feeling like the work you're doing is important because I feel amazing right now. Like I'm in a flow state as we speak right now. There's no thoughts in my brain. Put me into school right now. And I'm pretty sure my mind would start to wonder because I'd be sat there. Like imagine if I had to go through school again, but with, you know, the same kind of brain as I have right now. And it'd be hard for me to not be pissed off because I'd be like, wait, I'm not stupid. This is actually pointless. Like school is generally pointless. Like you could think I'm some internet entrepreneur who's saying, yeah, you know, drop out of school and become a businessman. Not really. Like education's super, super important. Of course it is. E education is vital. I still learn for hours every day. But the school system is just a very poor way to educate people, right? It's like to educate the masses, fine. I guess like, you know, they did the best that they could. But if you're watching a video like this, you would be able to like learn so much more efficiently and effectively by yourself than if you were in the normal education system. And so if you put me back in there and then I see how stupid it is that all we have to do is like take all these lessons, revise, study for this big upcoming exam that like one student in my year will kill themselves because of the stress that comes with that. And everything that we studied all these hours 
for this exam to be tested on our memory. So basically, no matter what subject we're studying, really the test is just on your memory of how good you can remember bullshit, which isn't actually a good skill to have anyway. And the moment we're done with the exam, we now need to forget what we've just learned and start revising studying for the next exam. Anyone who's not like brain dead can see how stupid the system is. And so therefore feels like there isn't a lot of purpose in being there. I feel like there's so much purpose in my work. For a long time, like I really saw myself as like a modern day leader who was educating the youth. And I felt like I had that massive responsibility. These days, I don't really feel like that because I've kind of, you know, branched out a bit more and I feel like I've had my my season my purpose layer of feeling like a leader and so it's back to just the baseline of being a youtuber which is still really high which is just like synthesizing what you've recently learned I've learned things I've put them into practice and then I just come to the camera and just kind of teach you what I've learned and implemented so that hopefully you can make faster progress than me and it's like a win-win it's like a beautiful passage of wisdom it feels purposeful it feels important and so it feels important for me to wake up early and to work on this because it's like I know that you know, this video will get 50,000, 100,000 views and probably a few thousand people will really take action on it, which means like a few thousand of my boys, of guys who see themselves as kind of like in my group, like my brotherhood, have just become stronger because of this. Like how awesome is that? Every day, like if I meet a fan, they'll say that their lives have been changed by my work. And so it feels like I've got a lot of purpose in the thing that I do. And so, of course, it makes it kind of easy for my brain to want to focus during this work. If you don't have that and you're the kind of person who's either in school right now, but you hate it or you're in work or doing some kind of business that you don't feel like has purpose. It's very hard to keep your brain focused just because your brain knows like this is kind of pointless. I speak to people every day who want to be entrepreneurs. And as soon as they mention something like crypto or trading, I already know what they're going to be feeling like because there's no fucking purpose in that it's very hard to stay focused in something that's like not important like it might be the thing that makes you money you might be in school right now because you just need to graduate so that your parents get off your back but if you genuinely don't think it's important your brain will struggle to focus and would rather go and think about other things so you might find yourself in school or in work or working on your shitty business model that your brain would be rather thinking about something else that other thing might be the thing that you actually really want to do unless if it's like some dopamine bullshit like for example when i was in school my brain used to think about video games but i'm very grateful to have the kind of business where it feels purposeful and it also makes a fuck ton of money. That's why I recommend the same business model to everyone. In some ways, I'm basically telling you to copy me and to compete with me just because of how awesome this business model has been. Learn things in real life, post content about it on social media, like on YouTube or TikTok, basically explaining the thing that you just learned and you implemented, and then eventually make what's called a school community. And that's how you make money. That simple. Obviously, it's really fucking hard. You have to deal with so many limiting beliefs and haters and uploading at the right time and everything. You know, there's so many skills to learn. But the business model is so simple and it's actually so purposeful because you'll go learn something and then you'll pass that wisdom down to someone else. And so that helps them. And then they like you for that. And then eventually you sell them that school community, which is basically a place for you to like keep doing the exact same thing of you learning something and then teaching it and you make a fuck ton of money doing that and you're actually helping people to learn more like i'm educating the youth i take my work still very seriously i'm not just making youtube videos i'm educating young men i'm an educator i'm a teacher so of course like as i say these words i'm in a complete flow state my brain wants to focus because it sees how important it is i want to ask you that question like when you do your work does your brain focus like this do you believe that your work is actually purposeful in helping other people and also helping the kind of people that you want to help? Is your work the work you actually want to do? Please just answer that question to yourself right now. Is your work the work that you actually want to do? Because I'm so happy and proud and fulfilled to say that mine is. And so I, I, I wake up every single day, like excited to work. It's like, it's my most favorite thing. If you watch a bunch of my videos, you know, like my sort of timeline. I've always been addicted to like video games and drugs and, and degeneracy up until I discovered this work. And I still slip into those things. You know, I still end up like taking drugs every now and then or being a degenerate every now and then. But for the last four or so years, I've been so committed to this work because I see the purpose, the mission that I have here. And I really hope that you discover something like that because it's amazing. When a man finds that, 
he grinds it and works so hard that he can create amazing things. Along with that, you know what I'll just say, which you might not have ever heard me say before. If you're not working hard on something that you don't find purpose in, like for example, school, I don't blame you, honestly. Like because of how important it is that a man works on his purpose, his mission. If right now you're being forced to go through something like school or some shit job that you don't like, and it's so hard for you to like work really hard or to be focused during that time, I don't blame you because your brain already knows that you don't like that thing, that you don't value it. And so you're stuck in that situation, you know, till your parents get off your back or till you've made enough money to quit the job or whatever it is. I hope you get out of that situation fast because I remember times when I was in school, I remember times when I was working a full-time job. Yeah, it just, it wasn't fun. And I'm very happy with where I'm at right now. Now, the third reason why your brain can't focus is because of poor attention spans. You've probably heard all of those like statistics that the human attention span has went so low to about seven seconds that now it's actually less than goldfish. That study is actually like five years old. So I think these days it might even be less than that. It might even be like four seconds. Anything below 10 seconds starts to feel like ADHD. Like if you can't stay on one thought on average for 10 seconds, that's when it starts to feel like ADHD when you have like overlapping thoughts and I've spoke to people who genuinely have like actual ADHD and it's like they get like a barrage of thoughts at once so imagine if like a person who's got really good attention span will get one thought and it lasts in his brain for like 15 seconds a person who's got kind of like poorer attention span less than a goldfish he gets that thought in his brain and it lasts for like seven seconds before he gets another one right so that's what his brain looks like and seven seconds isn't a long time to hold a single thought people with like actual adhd because they've really like abused short form content and shit food and anything else or maybe it's a bit of genetics or whatever it is it's more like this where it's more like literally one second and they get another thought and another thought and another thought and another thought like i know some people who literally like they'll speak to you and they'll get four thoughts that come at once that they almost need to like close their eyes to try and organize them to you and it's very like it, it, it's quite sad to see that so your attention span will then dictate like how well you can focus so there's two things that influence this and pull you either side the thing that will really shorten your attention span and make it so that you get more thoughts per second or per minute which is probably a bad thing is what i believe short form and hyper stimulating content. This is why like I got off the content machine like in 2023, like I was making like those dopamine edits where it was like fast paced and everything. And it was amazing. Like I grew a business, grew a massive audience. And since that point, I stopped making the dopamine edits and every now and then, you know, as a content creator, I want to see the views grow. So I start doing all the editing again. And I just think like, I can't be part of the problem. I can't do that. Like I don't want to be like the guy who's making all these like edits, which are actually making people's attention span worse because there's new flashy dopamine in my videos and so I've, I've honestly like if i can be honest to you like i've taken a massive hit to my ego my business by stopping those things because when i do those things like the video like retention on youtube is is through the roof it's like 60 70 percent of people will like finish watching the video it's insane you know there's there's flashy stuff there's sound effects and everything but i couldn't do it with like a clear conscious anymore knowing that i was like making the problem worse knowing that the videos that actually helped me the most not just that stimulated me were ones like this which were just based basically like long form content. Maybe there's a bit of editing here and there. Like we, we've got the subtitles at the moment because a lot of people have been saying that they like that. You know, we'll throw up like a picture or a video of me every now and then. That's fine. But when we used to do like those hyper edits, the videos used to perform more and some of like on average, a lot of my videos used to get like 500K views, 1 million views, but we've like fallen off right now. But it's just because I'm not really making content for the masses anymore. I'm more making it for like more of a mature audience who doesn't need those things. And I've taken that hit, but it was almost like a moral decision, which I won't lie to you, like I've failed multiple times. I made the decision that I started doing them again, then I stopped doing them, then I started doing it again. That's the thing that can really make your attention span worse and give you more thought is the sort of hyper edited content or shorts because shorts really do that. Imagine most shorts on average are like 10 seconds and you might not even stay on each one for 10 seconds. And so it's like you're getting a new thought, like a new idea, a new context every few seconds, every five seconds, five seconds, two seconds, one second. And that's just shortening your attention span more more and more and more. When that's shorter and you have less thoughts per minute, then it's way harder for you to focus because you're trying to focus and you get another thought and another thought and another thought and another thought. So you should be wondering, what has this effect? What opens the attention span? What makes it bigger so that you have less thoughts 
per minute. And the single greatest thing, apart from like, you know, getting away from the, the dopamine content and going on like a dopamine detox is meditation. Because meditation is the skill of getting that thought and focusing on it. It's the skill of realizing the thought has just come up and then going back to whatever you were focusing on. And so meditation kind of stretches out how long you can hold a single coherent thought for. It stretches out how long you can stay in a flow state for, which is what I'm in right now. A flow state is when you have zero thoughts in your brain. So usually when I do my work like this, especially when I record, I have zero thoughts in my brain. I was in London a few weeks ago and I went on to this podcast called Strike It Big. And I mentioned it to them there, like, you know, my diet's really clean. And, and so I usually get into a flow state. I have zero thoughts whilst I work. And some like some vegan tried to do like a reaction video saying like, oh yeah, we can see you've got no, like no brain or, you know, he was trying to like just like mock me or something. That's all the comments. Was all the comments were saying the same thing. They, they timestamped the bit where I said like I've got no thoughts in my brain, but I came into the do this podcast where I was talking about being in a flow state, and all these vegans were trying to make fun of me, saying like, "Oh yeah, see, like he's brain dead." But all I could think was like, vegans don't even know about flow states. They just eat so much garbage, manipulated vegetables which are covered in pesticides that they don't even know about the concept of flow state. So you know, fuck them, let them have it. But when you meditate more. And also when you like do the rest of the things, your attention span will just increase, 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 which is a very beautiful thing. So I can actually tell you those days when I used to meditate in 2020 for literally like 60 minutes a day. I used to meditate for 20 minutes, three times a day on back in like that year. My brain was very still and I was actually significantly happier then than I was right now. These days that I most likely to cope and I say like oh I don't really have time for it it's just kind of boring to do I don't really want to do it but it's been in my mind for like months even years that I really want to get back to that like high volume practice because it gave me a lot of peace in my life I was significantly happier back then these days you know I won't lie to you like I actually had a little period recently of like just watching fucking Instagram reels it gets me every now and then like maybe like once a month or twice let's say 10 20 times a year there'll be a period for like a few days where I end up like consuming content like a fucking normie and I'm watching reels and shorts and stuff and it's fucking it's horrible it's like you know it's kind of funny at first and I'm watching memes and everything and then after a few days of watching it for like one or two hours a day I get so sick of it and disgusted by myself and I'm like pissed off about it and I feel the difference. Like I literally have felt over the last few days after having that little content, like short barrage that my attention span is worse, that I'm actually less happy than I'm like, like, you know, my attention is going, I can't focus as much. I don't really want to do like this, like deepest work that I usually like to do. So just be careful because if you want to have that impact of, you know, feeling like you love the work that you do, be careful watching the kind of content that's so hyper stimulating that will actually make you enjoy your work less. There was a lesson I learned from an entrepreneur I really look up to, his name's Alex Becker. And he said, basically to become a businessman, you have to cut out everything that's kind of fun. Because if you've got something that's more stimulating than business, you'll naturally just wanna go and do that thing. You need business like your work to be the most stimulating thing that you do. There's problems that arise, there's challenges, there's goals, there's hard moments, there's satisfaction and accomplishments. You need that from business, not from video games, not from content, not from anything else. You basically said like, make sure that your business is the place that you get the biggest source of dopamine and that you don't get like more dopamine from something else, like some bad habit, like eating junk food or taking drugs or being a degenerate or whatever. And it's 100% true, the most progress I've ever made in business or in any kind of work is when I haven't had like something that's super stimulating in my life. So that business, my work is the most stimulating thing. So that's another question to ask yourself right now. What is the most stimulating thing in your life right now? Is it your work? Because many people can't say it is, right? Many people are quite bored by the work. Is it the content you consume? Is it the social media you scroll on? Is it like looking at Andrew Tate's tweets and there's another controversial thing going on? Is it looking at like the news or some shit? Is it like the chaotic relationships that you get yourself into? The fourth reason why your brain can't focus is just the common distractions that pull you away from your work. And there's two major ones here, notifications and then family and your environment and people you live with. From the start of like my productivity journey, like in 2020, I have been so cutthroat with like digital distractions. From that time, I've kept my phone on do not disturb, silence, sometimes airplane mode. And I've had all notifications disabled so that I wouldn't get distracted. Like it blows my mind that some people try to work with a phone that will literally distract them 
and they won't change that. When you get into a flow state, you're like in the middle of a work session, you're really focused. How could you ever live with yourself if your phone randomly just distracted you? So I've gave this advice out so many times, please follow it. Go onto your phone right now, put it on do not disturb mode, put it on silence, put it on airplane mode if you're working, go onto the settings, search for notifications, go through every app that you have that usually shows you shit and turn it all off. I have it that even when I scroll the notification tab down to see my notifications, that I can see where I've got messages, but I can't see what the message actually is. So that this way, it's like when I see the list of notifications I have, if there's a text message and a WhatsApp and stuff, it just says WhatsApp message. It doesn't even tell me who it is. It doesn't even tell me like what they've said up until I click on it. So that this way, my phone is like so sacred. If I go onto my phone to do something like, you know, I'm tracking my workout or I'm writing a note, I won't get something that pops up on my screen saying like, oh, this girl sent you a message and this is exactly what she said because suddenly now I've got two things in my mind, right? It's like I had that thought like we were talking about before and suddenly there's a new one that's just been implanted in there. Why would I want like a new thing to just distract me? Like if you respect yourself, you wouldn't allow this to happen and there's only a few simple things that you can do to change that. So my phone feels so sacred that even when you tap the screen, like for most people, when you tap the screen, the phone lights up, it doesn't. My phone only kind of like lights up when you press the power button. When there's a notification, my phone doesn't actually light up. So it's like, it doesn't distract me whilst I try and work. The only difference to this, which I'll make a quick disclaimer is when you get to a certain level, replying back to messages becomes one of the most important tasks that you do. At that point, you might want to change this, but basically you don't need to listen to that, what I've just said for literally years. Once you start making like over a hundred grand a year, once you've got like five team members and stuff, then at that point, fine, you can consider something else. Else. But for right now, if you're especially in like that sort of solo entrepreneur or you're a student, the notifications you're getting are not valuable, right? I want you to feel kind of pissed off. Like do this right now. Just think about the, the people who text you. Think about like what you get notifications for and what you've been distracted from your work before and get a little bit pissed off of almost how insignificant like the contents of that distraction has been and that you've allowed it to actually lower your success in life. Like there's this one friend who always sends you fucking reels on Instagram, then you click on it and then you end up scrolling. You should be kind of pissed off that that happens. And then with family and people you live with, that can be distracting. You know, your family can come in and, and distract you, disturb you whilst you're trying to work. There's honestly not much you can do about this. Eventually, when you make enough money from your business, you can go in and move out when it's possible. For now, suck it up, deal with it in a weird way. Instead of revolting against your family, I've actually found that it's better that you go more towards love and you express gratitude, even when your family's kind of disturbed in your work. So for example, if you feel like right now, no matter what your family's like, whether they're quite abusive or they're very nice, I would be doing some kind of gratitude practice about your family every single day where you wake up, maybe you do some meditation and you start to write down like five things you're grateful for your family for. And it might be a struggle at first and you might be thinking like, oh, well, there's nothing I'm grateful for. They're horrible people. They're this, they're this. No, no, no. I'm not telling you to write down anything negative. Force yourself to pick out something that's positive. And suddenly the most abusive family member that you've always hated, you end up writing something nice about them where you're like, oh yeah, well, they have done that thing for me. Oh, they are like this. That's what actually starts to create like a way better stable household, which has less distractions. The final reason why your brain can't focus it's just in general having a chaotic life and different aspects of that. It's like having a high maintenance girlfriend who always wants to see you and she's like offended when you don't want to see her because you'd rather work. And so basically you have like a relationship that's incompatible, but you're just there because it's easier to stay together because you're a coward. I've been there. Having a chaotic life can also come from consuming like emotional content, like reels of stupid people. And you click on the comments and there's basically only stupid people in the comments and you're brainwashing yourself to kind of step more towards the peasants and you're, you're reading the comments. I just did this recently. The truth is no one like intelligent comments on Instagram reels, right? No one intelligent is there like, you know, leaving a comment that's going to benefit you in life. It's all just drama. Like there's some reel that's gone viral of some girls saying this and then some guys are replying in the comments and then girls are replying and you're just seeing people like having arguments and drama and disagreements and it doesn't actually fucking help you. It's kind of entertaining, but you really, when you consume anything, you become more like that which you consume and you probably don't want to be like these fucking broke peasants who are spending their time on Instagram. And so that's like emotional content. Maybe you see like Twitter beef or some shit or like creator influencer beef, you know, like there's some YouTubers having a fight with some other YouTubers 
YouTuber. That's why through my time of being a YouTuber, I've wanted to really keep that shit so low because I've never wanted my viewers to like have their time and their sort of attention span fucked up from seeing like, oh, Hamza reacts to this YouTuber who said some shit about him and stuff. I've always tried to like not have that sort of clickbait beef kind of title there's been a few times i've had some like creator shit fine but i've always tried to keep that down just because it's so fucking annoying when i see content from certain youtubers who all they fucking do is talk about each other like little fucking women on the internet just gossiping it's like where's the fucking value in that it's just embarrassing it's like all that's happening is your viewers are just spending wasting their time watching this book was, which isn't even like it valuable so i wanted to keep that low for you but also another form of chaos can be stuff like watching the news or for example having family that watch the news and then pull that bullshit onto you so i've said strictly to my mother like i don't want to hear about the news because there was a time when you know she watches it all the time and shit like parents do and she'd be telling me stuff that happened and i was like no no like don't tell me i don't give a fuck like parents can't understand that you don't like the news one because it's all fucking propaganda it's not even reliable but two i'll deal with it when it comes oh this thing's happened in the world i don't care if you didn't tell me i wouldn't have known today if something is going to affect me today it's going to affect me today and i'll deal with it when the reality hits but i don't need to hear like some shit on the the news from some like filtered manipulative usually like pedophile filled organization like any of these news agencies so i don't need to like l hear any of this i tell my family all the time don't tell me that stuff don't put it into my brain so that my brain can just stay stable you're on a fantastic path you break out of those five things that are stripping your focus from you and you really like improve and get more into a flow state and increase the attention span. You know what's going to happen to you. Like you're going to build so much more success and you know, the money and the status, the followers, all of that stuff is awesome when you can work harder. But I'm telling you like the, the single biggest benefit is that you actually just start to enjoy work more because you become like a capable knowledge worker. That's what I really wish for you. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to do the hard work, especially if you don't feel like it. Bye.